What is up everyone? Ultula Scrub here. We are back. Hopefully, 100% less drop frames. Hopefully. Because, holy shit, that was really bad. It was, it was kind of funny. Um, for those of you who don't know, I tried to record or stream this episode uh, two days ago. On Monday, unfortunately, I dropped a hell of a lot of frames. No clue why. Uh, I did wind up changing the uh, server on OBS, so hopefully everything will be a-okay. We're going to be looking again at this book. Just want to say, we're gonna be, I'm going to be doing these books a lot. You know, there's, there's not a lot of videos out there on not just Cold Set the Revolt, but Cold Set in general that teaches people how to do things. Call to Step does teach people, you know, the basics. But a lot of the more complex combos and stuff, it, it doesn't do that good of a job. It basically puts it on the user, puts it on you to learn for yourself. And it's great! Okay, because the best way you're gonna learn is hands-on doing it yourself. There are some things that, you know, you might never have thought about. And this is one of the books we're going to be looking at. Uh, this one is called My Koran Version 1. Well, okay, the, the awkward translation, it's not too bad in this one. Dear God, on, on the PS2, it's, it's bad. But there are some cards that are worded wrong. Let's, let's just look at one of those cards that translation hurt. Um, just Purify. Purify states removes all enchantment effects from the map. User then gains number of enchantments removed times 50. Unfortunately, because of bad translation, it's a number of different enchantments. Dear God. Uh, another one that trips people up. It's also a great card. If you can use it, um, you have it, is Great Tusker. Great Tusker says neutralizes attacks first. Roughly in Japanese, it actually says neutralizes uh, creatures with attacks first. Like this won't neutralize an item that gives attacks first. Only neutralizes creatures that have that ability. So, there are some weird translation errors, but it's not too, too bad in Revolt. Okay, so again, hopefully we'll have less drop frames, because I dropped about 13 or 14,000 frames in under 10 minutes in the last one. It was kind of funny. Oh yeah, Quintessence. That is because I think they used the less than or equal to symbol for quintessence. Or maybe they just said the less than or equal to. I can't remember if 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 in Japan they had the, the symbol or if they used the word. But yeah, Quintessence is one. But really, I mean, if, if you look at the PS2 version, that's... Oof. As, as bad as Revolt might be, it's, it's nowhere near that level. This is... Funny enough, this is the most polished version, which, which, as far as translation goes. But this is the book. This is My Koran version 1. And the first card you have is the little Hellgrammet. Its strength is 30, its HP is 30. You need water territory to even place it. And its ability is when it's defeated, when it gets destroyed, it evolves into Serpent Fly. Oh, 
Oh, it's it's pretty funny if you look at the PS2 version. Um, Serpent Fly is actually a an air creature that can get uh, land boost from water land. Its strength also goes up 10 when it's Serpent Fly. Next creature we have is the namesake of this book. It's Mycoron. It has regenerate, and at the end of battle, if Mycoron took even one point of damage, or if um, the land buffer, that, that HP buffer zone that I've talked about in the guide on Cold Accept Central, if that HP buffer from the land boost, if that took any damage, you create a copy of Mycoron and it puts it anywhere on the field or on the map. You don't know where it's going, it's randomly placed. You can actually look at a clip from this channel I made today and I forced the opponent's Phoenix onto my Mycoron, survived with it. Phoenix could not return back to the land and uh, my little Mycoron actually stole the land back. Next creature we have is Undyne. You have to be careful with Undyne. Undyne has an in battle ability that states HP equals number of water territories the user owns times 20, and it neutralizes water. Here's the thing it's HP equal, not plus. So that means that in battle, if you have him down, and you have no creature on water, he dies instantly. Because his HP is going to instantly equal zero. So you have to, you have to, you have to watch out for that. Like, in my opinion, it's probably better if you get him on the field as like the fourth creature. Um, you need water territories for Helgram and, and Vigilante. So if you can have if you have my Koran down or if you can put Undyne on a water land, that's even better. But if you don't have a water land, he's going to die in battle instantly. And the last creature we have is Vigilante. Vigilante is uh, he's a little tricky to use sometimes. Um, in battle, you quickly tap the A button to increase your HP. If your HP is raised above 100 in this way, it becomes 10. Here's the issue. You have Petrify Stone, which makes it so HP equals 80. I was going to tap A once in the last time I did this stream, when I was trying to run this book before I had frame drops. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm like, I'll tap A once. I'm like, no, I won't. I accidentally tapped A. His HP went over 100 from one tap. And it instantly made him 10 HP. You have to watch out. Uh, it might be better if instead of using, you know, Angry Mask or Petrify Stone, if you use Wonder Charm on him. But we'll get into that in a moment. So yeah, you have to watch out for that HP boost. And I don't know if the buffer zone adds to it, because, I, like I said, I was at 80 HP on a level 3 land. I accidentally tapped A once, and his HP became 10. Next card we have is the first of the uh, three item cards. That is Angry Mask. Angry Mask is one of the really amazing tools. It states that your HP goes up 30, and at the battle end, if your creature survives, your opponent's HP is removed to how much damage your creature took. So if your creature took 50 damage as Angry Mask is in play, if your creature survives, the opponent's HP is going to lose 50 HP. It loses that from its core HP. Okay, so land boost is not going to be affected. That's not going to stop it. So if it only had 50 HP or if it had 40 HP, it now has zero. 
So you can kill a creature instantly with this setup. And I've done this. I've actually made the opponent land on my stuff or moved one of my creatures onto it. And I used Angry Mask when I knew that they didn't have any weapons. So I knew that they couldn't kill my creature. And I knew at the end of battle, the how much damage they could deal to my creature, their HP would get removed from that. Or that would get removed from their HP. The next item we have is Petrify Stone. Your strength equals 0 and your HP equals 80. This does not include land bonus. So if you're on a level 3 water land with any of these things, they're, they're going to get an additional 30 HP from that land bonus. Okay, so Petrify Stone is really good. Oh, again, watch out <laughs> with it with Vigilante. Vigilante might you might want Wonder Charm. And let's look at Wonder Charm. Wonder Charm neutralizes 80% of damage received from normal attacks. There's another reason for Wonder Charm, and that is my Koron. Because if my Koron takes any damage, you instantly place a my Koron on a vacant land. Well, now you're only taking 20% of the damage they were dealing to you. Right? So, now you're, you're barely taking any damage. He regenerates, so his HP goes back up anyway. And you get to place a Mycoron on the field. Just note, um, I do think a really good strategy for Mycoron might also be adding Kelpie. Because you could literally put a Mycoron on like a decent land. Have enough items in your hand like Petrify Stone, Angry Mask. Uh, you would want some actual armor because Kelpie can't use tools. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, you can swap it out really quickly. But yeah, Wonder Charm with Mycoron, you're, you're making copies. It's going to be super hard for them to kill you because they can only deal 20% of their damage to you. Now onto spells. One of the first spells we have is Drain Magic. User steals 30% of target enemy scepter's current magic. This... You have to know when to use it. Because it costs 80 magic. You're only going to steal 30%. So, if your opponent has a lot of magic, this is great. I think the most I ever stole from someone was like 415 magic. Something like that. They had a bunch. <laughs> they had a bunch. Then I stole the rest. But no, um, you can use this to hurt them in general. Because they're going to lose 30%. You're going to steal that no matter what. Uh, it's best to try to make it so you actually get more magic, because it does cost 80. Next spell we have is Fat Body. Fat Body is useful for really two creatures. Um, you really wouldn't need a Fat Body on this guy, because even if he dies, he comes back as another creature. So they're still having to pay a toll fee. Him on a level 5 is... ouch. You have to understand... This is not a battle end ability. This is when this creature dies, it transforms into another creature, and the opponent still has to pay the toll fee. So Fat Body is useful for Mycoron and Vigilante. Uh, you wouldn't want to use it on Undying, because in battle its HP equals whatever. So Fat Body is useless. So basically, Vigilante and uh, Mycoron are the two creatures you want Fat Body on. Uh, the next spell we have is Gift. For 100 magic, you gain 50 magic and you draw a card from your book based on your rank. Meaning, technically standing. They, they call it rank, it was called standing in uh, Cold Decept Saga. Your rank is what your position is in the game at that point in time. So if you're in first place, you're drawing one card, you're gaining 50 magic. If you're in second place, you're 
gaining 100 magic and you're drawing 2 cards. Obviously, if you're in 4th place, you're drawing 4 cards and you're uh, getting 200 magic. This card is way better than mana. Yes, you do gain more magic with mana. You're gaining 50 per lap level. Or, yeah, 50 per lap. So if you made 3 laps, you're going to get 150 magic. But that's all you get. Whereas, in this thing, if you're in 2nd place, you're getting 100 magic and you're drawing 2 cards. Drawing, your, drawing the cards, and hopefully drawing the card you need, is way more valuable than an extra 50 or 100 magic. Especially now that they give you magic at the beginning of every round. Now, now it's 20 magic plus round level. Next spell we have is Magical Leap. Uh, you can transport to any space or any territory within one to four spaces of yourself. Can't roll a die this turn. This is useful. This is useful for after you've already lapped and passed by a gate, like the last gate. You can literally magically leap yourself back on that gate. Because sometimes the maps are a little spread out, so hitting the gates are a little slow. But you can actually pop yourself back onto a gate. You can also use this to escape. Like if you know the opponent has, you know, an old willow or a kelpie or just any high level land and you have a feeling you're going to land on it, you can just leap right over it. This is way better than the card escape, because escape you need to have a vacant land. If there's no vacant land nearby, you're not escaping. Whereas this, I can go, okay, do I want to land on the level 4? Or do I want to land on that level 1? <laughs> well, that's easy. You land on the level 1. And you can do that with this. Uh, the next card we have is Metamorphosis. You have to pay 80 magic, discard a card, select an item or a spell card from target enemy Scepter's hand, and you change all cards in the game that so like if, if I wanted to change magical leap like if I didn't have magical leap and I wanted to destroy my opponent's magical leap I can use metamorphosis to change their magical leap in their hand and in everybody's hand into holy word six Um, sorry, this also changes all the cards in all books as well. So, w one of the things I don't have in here is like, I don't have Shatter. So if I know somebody has Shatter, or if they have a really good shield, like if somebody has Storm Shield or Magma Shield, you can convert all of them to Holy Word 6 in all hands and books in the game. Uh, the only way to revert that is with a card called the Revival. Show you what that card looks like. It's actually good because if you ever run into this card, you can uh, convert that and you don't have to worry about it. Literally, actually. Um, you ever see this card? Metamorphosis, this card. Always use it on this card. It says, Target Scepter's book is reverted to the state it was. Uh, in when the game began. This doesn't mean, and what I originally thought this meant, is that if you're starting, if your book starting off in that match had these great 10 cards in a row, it seems like you would have those great 10 cards next. It doesn't do that. What it does is it puts all the cards used at that point in time back into the book and reshuffles the book. And any card that was changed via Metamorphosis goes back to their original state with this card. If you ever see this card, destroy this. Because then they cannot revert their cards back. As far as I know, I think this is the only way to undo Metamorphosis, is destroying the Revival. You have to understand, if you, if you Metamorphosis one of them, all of them go. So, 
if everybody you were going against had four of them in their in their book, and one person had it in their hand, now they're all gone. So if you ever see that card, get rid of it. Next card we have is Outrage. Outrage moves target uh, creature to an adjacent enemy territory. This card is what I made my how I made my opponent lose their Phoenix. Because Phoenix, at the end of when it's defeated, it doesn't come back to their to the land. It goes back to their hand. But uh, outrage. This is how you can trick people too. This is how you can hurt the your opponent. Like if I know I have a Mycoron, and I know I have like there's a Mycoron on play, and I have a, I have Wonder Charms in my hand, I can literally outrage them onto my Mycoron. Or, if I know they have no armor, and they don't have attack first, it's like, let's say they can do 40 strength, let's say they have 40 strength, they only have 40 HP, and I have an angry mask in my hand. Well, I can outrage my Mycoron onto their land, it doesn't matter what level their land is, because angry mask ignores the, the bonus. A green mask hits their core HP, their base HP. Well, now if they do 40 damage to me, they're losing 40 HP. If that kills their creature, I take the land. You know, there, there's many good ways to use Outrage. Next card we have is Reincarnation. Reincarnation. User discards all cards from current hand and draws a number of cards equal to that number plus one. This card was, was actually kind of changed since Saga. It's called the Sap Saga. Because it used to just be, you know, you discard all cards in your hand and you draw that many cards. So, if if I discarded five cards, I'd get five cards back. Now, if you discard five cards, you get six cards back. Because you get plus one. If you discard four, you get five back. Discard three, you get four. I kind of like the fact that they added the one. Um, the next spell card we have is Tiny Army. This is a hidden card. Now you know, on the on the right side of your screen at the top, where it says Tiny Army and book information. You know when you're playing a game, you can click on somebody's name, and you can see the cards that they have in their hand. Any card that says hidden, you cannot see. Hence the whole hidden card. Um, any card that's hidden you can't see. I think you can only see it with a, with clairvoyance. Might be another card. I think there's like one or two cards that let you see hidden cards. Otherwise you cannot see them. You'll see it just says hidden. I think you see the, uh, the back side of it. Um, and Tiny Army says if user has five or more creatures with maximum HP of 30 and under, those creatures receive maximum HP plus 10, and user gains 500 magic. If not, recycles the book. Um, I do not know what happens if you use this card when you, if you don't have five or more creatures. Because some hidden cards actually kind of have two abilities. I believe that trigger on, on different ways like you'll you'll always get a but if you have five or more you also get B and in this one I don't know what happens um probably nothing because it says if you have five or more creatures the gain plus 10 maximum HP and you gain 500 magic if not recycle the book so I'm assuming that you'd be basically paying 100 magic just to recycle it. And the very last spell we have is Water Shift. Water Shift lets you change target territory belonging to user, so belonging to the person using this card, to a water land. 
The greatest thing about Water Shift is it only costs 100 magic. If you are converting any solid colored element, fire, water, earth, or air, to another solid colored element, at level 1 that costs 300. Level 2 is 400. Level 3 is 500. At level 600, and level 5 is 700. Okay. Uh, it's a little different if you're converting multicolor land. I think level 1 is 100, level 2 is 300. So on. Um, so it's kind of expensive. Like if you had a level 3 and you wanted to be level... Like if you had a level 3 and it was... Fire. And you wanted it to be water. You're paying 500 magic. Or you can just use water shift. Uh, same thing if, if it was level if it was a level five, which costs 700 magic, uh, you can do it for one. There's also a card called Storm Shift, which will convert any level three air land to water, and any level three water land to air. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of water shifts, or if you have Storm Shift, or maybe both, uh, that's another great card. Okay, so let us see this book in action. We have the same two people we had the last time, which is Alicia and Samana. I did wind up winning the match last time. Unfortunately, like I said, I had massively dropped frames. There is a clip you can watch of Phoenix losing the land to when I force it to fight my Mycoron. And Mycoron actually stole the land Phoenix was on, but as soon as it was gonna steal the land, my frames dropped then. You can see how bad it was. So, without further ado, let us go into the next match. Or, the first match, actually. Oh! Um... This is interesting. I actually know this map. Kind of funny. Um, okay, so one bad thing, one kind of good thing. Uh, I do have Vigilante, but I also do have Undyne. So what I could do is hopefully get Undyne down somewhere on either a Waterland. Good. Uh, one thing to note is this land that's right here that looks like a uh, grayish blue land with a little white circle in the middle. This is a morph land. Anything you put down on this land will convert to its element color, except for neutral. Uh, in Cold Decept Saga and in basically every other Cold Decept game, there used to be neutral colored lands. Uh, they were gray. They removed those, and now any neutral creature that goes down on a morph land will become uh, a multi element land, like you see in this top left and right corner. And there's also some down here, I believe. No. Never mind. It's your turn. So, now we do have uh, a creature down in the water. So now I could use Vigilante. Or at least I could pull it. Wait, let me see. What do people have? Trojan Horse and no items. Uh, you have an Eagle Rapier. So I could technically get rid of her first attack. Um, I don't really care. To the next gate. I'm gonna put him down anyway because I'm gonna have to discard a card. Even if I didn't, I would just have to have got rid of a card anyway. Alright, cool. So now I do technically have uh, an armor now. That is good. What does Samana have? Nothing yet. Alicia does not have anything else. 
Um. Little Yeti. It is actually not bad. It's one of the uh, instant death creatures. I think 60% instant death to fire. It's your turn. Okay, I'm gonna have to... Now I'm definitely gonna have to use something. Um... Oh, wait. I could just use Water Shift here. So I don't have to actually get rid of a card, I can actually use a card. The final you. Oof. The final you. Okay, so she's gonna do 50 damage. Um... Let's see if I can survive. Oh no, 70? I forgot. Shit. Never mind. I mean, thankfully that one didn't have penetrate. I somehow survived. See, that's one of those cards, like, if I saw that... Like, if I had a turn to prepare, I would have used Metamorphosis on that. Alright, let's draw two cards. Hopefully I'm gonna get a creature. Oh god, two Train Magics. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of one of you. Because I'm going to keep the, the uh, Drain Magics. i use it on little Samana over here. Oh god. Uh, don't hit anything. Okay, I have to get rid of that Drill Lance. That gives plus 20 strength and it penetrates. So it will ignore all land boosts. So for this, I can get rid of... Let's get rid of an Outrage. Goodbye, Mr. Drill Lance. Get out, bitch! I think Free Cyclone only does to Earth and Fire. Uh, of course, she would have to level that up. Does she have armor? Uh, no. So, if I rolled low enough, I can get a creature and something. Maybe I can kill it. Eh. I would just. I'm just hoping that I don't hit it. That was one charm. We're gonna take this from Samna first. Because we're probably gonna be giving it all back. Oh. To the next gate. Um, let's make sure our magic is low. Here's one thing to, to note about the AI. The AI will not use... Yep, free Cyclone to all fire and air creatures. Did not hit me. Or fire and earth, sorry. 
Um, the one thing to note about the AI is if the AI has drain magic, they will not use it on you if you don't have the most magic. So like if Alicia drew drain magic, she would hit Samana first because Samana has more than I do. If Samana were to draw it, she would use it on Alicia because Alicia has more than I do. So if you can always keep your your what I call liquid magic, because you see the top, you see there's two numbers on each person. I have 157 and 1357. 1384. 1384 is your total magic. It's your total mana. 184 is how much you have in what I call liquid magic. Sweet. The final gate awaits you. Put a little my car on down. But uh, like I said, if you have the least, or at least the second least, they won't hit you with drain magic. <laughs> she squeezed my outrage. That's rather funny. Uh, squeezing destroys the card and gives the person who they, that actually lost the card, it gives them 150 magic. So right now I have the most magic just because she decided to get rid of my card. Alright, so... I'm gonna fat body my little Mycoron. Alright, and one thing I want to know is this thing has 30 HP. This belongs to. Uh, that again, that belongs to Samana. Samana has no. Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, I'm gonna level this up. <laughs> she squeezed the anger out of me. I, I don't mind if the opponent squeezes the card because it gives me 150 magic. Like, if they squeezed an armor card, that would bother me. Just because, like, I need my armor. Squeezing the outrage, like, it sucks. Because it oh this is good. Water shift. Swap that to water. We are indeed we do going this way. Double that up. Here's the thing you have to watch out for. If she puts a Trojan horse here, she didn't. Uh, Trojan horse penetrates like land bonus, and it can use a creature as support. So you have to watch out for Trojan horse. Alright, does Samana have a weapon? 
She does have trident. Kaiser Penguin. Um, you can get rid of tools, so <laughs> that would be pretty bad. That'd be really bad. That's, that's all that's actually in this book are tools. Um, <laughs> that's not a good idea. What does Elise have, though? Does she have any weapons? No, she has armor. I think I'm gonna hold off. No, 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 no. I'm gonna hold off on that. Um, where are people on the map? She's over there. I'll wait to use Dream. I uh, know. Actually, I'm gonna use Dream Magic now. Anything good? Creature, item, spell. Um, I could use more creatures. Alright, cool, a little hell ground. Uh, Now I have 70 HP with, uh, You've a Vigilante. Good luck on your next journey. Now I'm probably gonna swap Vigilante for the Serpent Fly, when I can. Or, sorry, the, the Hell Grommet. Oh, let's get off the map. The final beat awaits you. Because you have to, you have to, ooh, my car. But you have to understand because if he dies, you don't lose the land. If he, well, if he dies in battle. If he dies in battle, you don't lose the land. It'll instantly evolve into Serpent Fly, and you get to keep the land. Level four now. Does she have armor. No, she still does have a weapon. Okay, so here comes quintessence. Holy crap, for some reason this battle frames just went up dramatically. Alright, you're probably wondering why I did that, even though nobody died. Their armor and or weapons are now gone. Uh, little Mycoron is gonna go on the field. Oh, well... And then she pulls Reincarnation out of somewhere. Which means now she probably has weapons or armor. She has three armor. 
She has two force anklets and one storm shield. Um, her water and air creatures are now impervious to uh, non-scroll attack damage. However, something like Angry Mask would instantly kill her. Kind of funny. She does have Force Inkling. Alright, we are gonna go... this way. Put down the little grommet. Great Tusker, huh? You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next turn. My lands grow ever stronger. It's your turn. This actually isn't looking too good for me. This does not look good. Does Samana have any weapons? No, she just has armor. Okay. Which is technically good for me, because the armor she has is not really that good. What's her HP on? Uh, this is a classic example, right? Its strength is 40, its HP is 40. If I use Angry Mask on this creature, because she has no weapons, like if I were to land on it right now, I could kill this creature. Because Hellgromit has 30 HP, plus 40 from, or plus 30 from Angry Mask is 60. So I would survive with 20 HP, and her... Yeti would take 40 damage. Even though she has Storm Shield, this is not an attack hitting Yeti. It's a battle, it's an end of battle ability. So if I could manage to land on that, I could take over. So I'm definitely going this way because I'm going to try to take it out if I can land on it. Change this territory to water. that on herself to get past it. I mean, I don't blame her. But yeah, any creature that only ha that has 40 strength and 40 or under HP, not including land boost, I can take it out. The only thing I can't take out is the Kaiser Penguin. 
because the battle started, it'll destroy opponent's tool, scroll, or supporting creature. And the only thing that's in this book as far as items are tools. Uh, I did not land on that. What is his HP? His HP is now 70. Um, does Lisi have any weapons? No. Okay, so I'm not worried right now. Uh... I'm gonna get rid of gift. The thing that sucks is, the only thing I can't get rid of is her Undyne. Um. And she's gonna be getting a lot of magic from me if I land on that, which I probably will. Oh, okay, oof. Did not land on it. only 150 magic, you can... 158? Oh no, wait, never mind. Skip, I asked it. Uh, Alicia, you get to attack first, you have no armor. I have no nothing. Let's take this land from her. why I love Angry Mask. <laughs> They're pool buddies. <laughs> it just sucks that it's right there. Like, ugh. She landed on my, my Koron. Now, here's the thing, right? She's going to attack with Yeti and with... Uh... The item, which is 80... Damage? Oh no, 20? Uh, critical hit. Right, right, right. It does 18. My energy, my HP will regenerate and it puts my core on, on the field. Good job. At least he ain't going right. Okay. I got some magic I need to spend. Oh, thankfully I got that. Okay, how many creatures do I own? Alright, so let us use a uh, tiny army. Every single one of them is going to get plus 10 HP, and I obtained 500 magic. Gotta love that. Um, I'm going this way. Does someone have any armor? Oh, well, there is four things. Let's make that level 5. 
Now here's the thing, you see that right now I'm flashing. I technically won. I have to hit a gate right now to win. Okay. Depending on how my next roll is, I can win on my second turn. If I roll a one, um, technically I can I can make it so I can't lose, really within reason. No, there are there are quite a bit that are hidden. Uh, cool, I win on the next turn. Um, does Lisi have armor? Oh, but she can attack first, and if she attacks first, we give her plus 30 HP, or plus 30 strength, 70. I can't do it! Here's an interesting question. I'll get into hidden cards in a moment. What happens if I use Helgromit with Angry Mask even though this thing evolves into Serpent Fly? Let's find out. Because I don't know. So my HP is going up 30, right? She's gonna do 70 damage. It's gonna kill my creature, but my creature resurrects. It does not trigger. Okay. So resurrection into another creature does not do anything. Good to know. But no, next turn I actually win. Because I'm gonna magical leap myself right onto the east gate. My core on. Not attacking. My lands grow ever stronger. It's your turn. Magical leap. Get me on the gate. Will the win? You are the winner. Okay, so yeah, there, there's way more than one hidden card. Um, the true winner is let's actually the winner. look at them. Oh. This is seriously fast. Let's slow that down. Okay. Uh, let us edit the book. Because it's, it's the easiest way just to show cards. Okay, so that's one of them. Um, this is another one, Long Line. is also a hidden card. Um, I don't know what every single uh, hidden cards are. So you have Thunderclap, which is hidden. You have Tiny Army, the one that I just used. Uh, Sudden Impact is another hidden card. Sudden Impact lowers the level of target... Lowers target level 4 territory by 1. So it makes it level 3. Um, you have Sneak Hand, which is also a hidden card. I'm literally looking for all hidden. Because, yeah, I, I, I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, long line. You have home ground. You have, um, Fluxion and Flatland.
uh, assemble cards, or as Swap says in the Discord, uh, in the Discord, uh, assemble cards, or ass cards. No, this is the uh, my Koran book. This book, eh, it's a little slow for one on one. You know, I actually don't know. Uh, let's look. I actually never used it. I know it is used quite often. A uh, user has more than five level two territories. Reach each level's land by one. If not, recycle to book. So if you have five level twos, if you have seven level twos, they're all going to be uh, level three for 100 magic. <sighs> yeah. I, for I forgot that that's what this one did. <laughs> this one is used a lot. Um, you can actually tell. There are kind of telltale signs. Some people will try to trick others to thinking it is. That some people will trick people into thinking that they do have flat land. Some people will trick people into thinking they don't. Um, but yeah, if you see somebody has five or more level two lands, you could say, I mean, you, you have 50-50 chance, but you could say they probably have flat land. And Flatland has been used by Subject to actually win the game. Because remember, every time your land level goes up, your total magic goes up with it. So if you level up 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 level 2 lands to level 3, you are adding a hell of a lot of total mana. Flatland is is used by many people, and it's it's a really powerful card. But yeah, one one of the ways that that subject loved was if he had five more territories, and he was about to like let's say, if he hit the gate with the magical, obviously you win, and he had enough magic, just a little short, he could flatland, and he has, he would use flatland right before his his die roll, and then land on the castle. He also, uh, barely won one, I guess, because he kind of screwed himself over. He didn't play Flatland before he rolled, he landed on, on one of the gates. Luckily for him, he did win in a few turns, but yeah, Flatland is it's pretty powerful. Um, Tiny Army. Tiny Army is great for Powder Eater and Goblins. Because your HP is going up 10. And you get 500 magic. Here's a little tip for you. Tiny Army, Flatland, any spell, especially if they cost 100 or more. <clears throat> yeah, um... Like, if this, if this book was a little more refined and had, um, like if I had Flatland in here, or Tiny Army, and I had a bunch of little guys, you know who would, who would, who would help in that? Little Rune Adept. Look at his secret art. He's anti-spell. And Secret Art is 100 magic. Uses the effect of a spell card in your hand without actually using the card. If you've ever played Magic the Gathering, there's a card called um, Ishran Scepter where you would remove a card from play and attach it to the scepter. And you can play that card every turn. Well, it's kind of like the same way with Rune Adept. You can literally play that card every turn. Well, 
any time that he's not um, fatigued, you can use his secret art. So, if you had Flatland and you had a crap ton of level 2s, you can literally play that card and still keep the card in your hand. If you had Tiny Army and you had, let's say you just started a Powder Eater book, or Powder Eater, yeah. And let's say Powder Eater only had 10 HP at that time, 10 maximum HP. You can make that 20 maximum HP and still keep the card in your hand. Rune Adept with those hidden cards is pretty powerful. Rune Adept in, in any decent book is actually pretty powerful. <laughs> no, let's go back into it. Um, yeah. So that was technically the guide. I'm going to do another match anyway. Let's see how that one turns out. But yeah, this is basic. This is my Koran version 1. There is a version 2. We won't be seeing that book for a while. We might see other Mycoron books on this stream, but you won't be seeing the version 2 for this for a while. Because I want to say that's... Book number 150 that I have? I technically have 752 books in these PNG formats that you see. In the, in the pink format you see at the bottom right of your screen. Yeah. I have 752 of them. And I think version 2 for this book is 156 or 26? Either 126 or 156. Oh. Technically, I have all the cards in the game. So I can make any book. So the thing with these book guides is we're gonna be seeing we're gonna be seeing books that Japanese players have been using. This is one such book. This is from the book to PNG site. Um, like I said, I have 752 of them. Also, if anybody wants to see a book guide done of any book, either if they want to see how I might run the book, or if they want to see how a book idea in general can work, they can send me a book info on Discord, and I will be happy to check into that. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be doing another book in no uno momento. Put this down right now. Right. Let us start this next match. But yeah, if anybody wants to see a book done, like one of their books, or if they just want to know how X book would get done in general, uh, they can just send that to me via the Cold Decept Central Discord. You can send it to me in text form. I'll create a PNG out of it. And then, uh... Probably have that one be like the next book. Advance to the next gate. It's your turn. All right. All right. So this map, huh? I wasn't even looking. I'm actually. Looking at Pokemon right now, Pokemon X. <laughs> Doing two things at once. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, great. Good, 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 good. I can put down little Mr. Mycoron right away. Advance 
advance to the next gate. Right. Um I'll put down little Mr. Vigilante. Alright, have fun. The final gate awaits you. Discard your cards. The final gate awaits you. This is actually moving pretty fast. I'm actually surprised. Did it stop streaming? No, we're still going. Hmm. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. But I think what it also has to do is with certain maps, it's a little slower. Um, here we'll go this way. Damn those drill lances. Go away. Oh, the Okay, good. She's going that way. Good luck on your next journey. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. My lands grow ever stronger. Discard your cards. It's your turn. Alright, I'm in second place. I'm gonna wait. Because now I'm really looking pretty good. Good luck on your next journey. Uh Change that terrain to water. You know what else might help this book is if you uh, were to put quicksand on a level 5 hell grommet. Because remember, if it dies in battle, it turns into serpent fly, and they have to pay that fee anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Oh, shit. Oh, that's not me, that's her. Never mind. Never mind. So unfortunately, like, this map is pretty short. Dream magic. Alicia, you should start sharing. Sharing is caring. Grow ever stronger. Discard. 
So I might lose this match because this, this book is more designed for longer maps. But I mean, if I lose, it doesn't really matter. I've already proved that this book can beat people. It starts off slow. Welcome back. I'm literally playing Pokemon X as I'm playing this because I'm trying to get dittos. <laughs> um, first things first. Uh, we're getting rid of Outrage. Just so I can heat up them. Right, Alicia? Yeah, and I'm getting rid of your drill lances. Bye. Gone! You're gone, drill lance. See ya, Satan. The final gate awaits you. Alright. Sayonara, Satan. Drew Lance does plus 20 strength and, um. You've earned a reward. Ah, penetrates, so it ignores the land boost. Works like scrolls, but it's way more powerful than scrolls. I was like, oh yeah, I can, I can level that up to, to level 2, and then I'm like, oh wait, crap. Probably assuming that I'm going to land on her uh, jelly wall. You know, it's not a bad idea. It's not really a terrible idea. Um, I still got away. Have a little fun. It's your turn. Who's got weapons? I'm gonna suck my land on that because I just keep rolling ones. 
I don't see me really surviving this game, this match. It's like if I try to attack this thing, this thing ten strength. Like that's that's a joke. Does she have weapons? Yes, yeah, she does. Okay. So, we'll, we'll level that one up. So, I can actually evade it. I just have to freaking magical leap twice. Not a big deal. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. My lands grow ever stronger. Good luck on your next journey. It's your turn. Alright. Oh wait, I only need to magical leap once. Wait. Ooh, you're hitting probably my land. Hey, you know what's funny? Why? <laughs> you would think it'd probably be a better idea to hit the freaking other land, but nah, okay. Like this. Coming for you, Samana. Oh, this way. So, my creature's dead, by the way, because if I use any of these things since they're tools, they instantly get destroyed. Goodbye, my Koran! Again, this match really isn't that important, because I did already show that you can, uh... So her creature just, yeah, but see, it's going to instantly destroy my item. So no matter what. Whoopsie daisy. Um. Yeah, this, this match is not looking good in my favor at all. I don't even think I have that many creatures in play.
The final gift awaits you. Discard your cards. Advance to the next gate. So the Megalodon get down there. What you got? What you got? Alright. And what weapons or armor do you have? You do have Force Anklet and you do have Ring of the Succubus. So... I... Do not want that creature. In that spot. Be gone, Satan! Oh, that's right, he neutralizes. God damn you, Undyne. <laughs> I forgot he neutralizes. of magic. going to do something you never really do, and that is, um, <laughs> magical leap onto your last gate. Usually you never do this. Oh, somebody else landed on it. Nice! Pay up! thing is if I hit a one or a two, I'm screwed. But let's go for it. Like if I hit a one or a two, I'm screwed. Hey, let's do it. Let's change you back to water. I will get rid of Touch by Stone. You ain't hitting me. I got too much. I don't have enough magic. Do you have any weapons? No, but I would be paying quite a bit, huh? Sucks for her.
sight. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. Right, so let us see what happens now. Good job. Discard your cards. It's your turn. Although it's kind of funny. Is my die roll is three, so now I can take this land. This land is my land. Now all I need is for people to start landing on all my stuff. She ain't gonna hit on anything. Fine, at least. Okay, so she went that way. I'm kind of intrigued. What do you have in your hand? Armor. A weapon. Hmm. Do I have another creature? No, I don't. Okay. Just this one, then. Huzzah! You know what's funny is I'm about to use the, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, Tiny Army. Give myself another 500 magic. Good luck on your next journey. My lands grow ever stronger. You don't have enough magic power. Discard your cards. I think I have five. Yep. Give me! Um... I'll put it all into this land. Hey, look who's gonna win as soon as I hit a gate. I'm actually kind of surprised. I, I really wasn't paying attention that much. Just showing how this book can go. Um, surprised I was able to pull that out, to be honest. But this is great. No, these these my Koran books start off slow and then gradually build up. Uh, magical leap. Actually, I could just magical leap myself to the uh, north, but eh, get even more magic. There you go. see from this chart, you can see how at first I was a little ahead, and then I went down, and I was I was in third place for a little bit. Okay, I mean, we're, we're talking good five to six turns, rounds, and I was in third place. Uh, cards like Tiny Army, if you have 
30 HP, 30 maximum HP or under. Um, you know, that tiny army can seriously help you out more than you know. Because not only does it increase your HP by plus 10, but it also gives you that extra 500 magic that you can put into something. And that 500 magic literally let me uh, level something up to level 5. And in doing so, basically gave me the win. So let us look at this book one more time. Okay, so again, you have Hellgramet, which is a water creature that when it dies turns into Serpent Fly, which is an air creature with 10 more strength, and it can receive land bonus from water. You have Mycoron, the namesake of the book, where it takes 10 damage. Or it takes 1 damage, it doesn't matter. If it takes any point of damage, it instantly... Um, puts a copy of itself, if it survives, it puts a copy of itself in play. Not exactly a copy, but it puts a Mycoron in play. Uh, so this is this goes really well with Wonder Charm, which lets you only take 20% of any normal non-scroll damage. Then you have Undyne, who so HP equals the number of water territories you own times 20. And it neutralizes water. Unfortunately, I screwed that up. But it neutralizes water. Um, so if you have five water territories, his HP in battle is 100. The last creature you have is Vigilante. Who is one of only two creatures whose either HP or strength can go up if you're tapping a button. And for HP, you have Vigilante. For strength, you have... Uh, Angry Mob. And if their strength, Angry Mob, or HP, um, Vigilante is over 100, it becomes 10, so you have to be careful. I don't know what the tap to HP ratio is, I should check that out. But unfortunately, I do not know what that is. One of the first items we have is Angry Mask. HP plus 30. At the end of battle, opponent's HP is minus damage your creature received in battle. So if they did 30 damage to you, they lose 30 to their HP. If they did 60 damage to you, they lose 60 HP. If you survive. Next item we have is Petrify Stone. Strength equals 0, HP equals 80. I think, in all honesty, um, as far as the, um, what do you call it, items go, you probably don't want to put everything into tools, because you saw that one creature, Kaiser Penguin, can destroy tools. It can't destroy armor, but it can destroy tools. So that's, you, you have to weigh the pros and the cons. And if you do try to use a Mycoron Kelpie book, like I was thinking about, you can't use tools because Kelpie can't use tools. The last tool you have is Wonder Charm. It neutralizes 80% of damage received from normal attacks. So that means you only take 20%. That's literally all you're going to take, is 20%. So, you know, if somebody kid to you, or, you know, whatever damage, now you get to take off 20%, the only thing you take is 20%. You, you literally barely take any damage. And then with my Koron, as long as that HP doesn't do more than its base HP, which is 30, in case they use an item, it'll survive. Hey, Bacon! Ah, uh, it's going good. I actually did not drop a single frame. Unlike last week when I tried to run this book, I lost, uh, 14,000 frames. 
in under 10 minutes. You can actually click, you can actually check out of my clips. I made a clip. Uh, it was literally funny. I moved somebody's Phoenix onto my Mycoron. Phoenix, when it's defeated, turns back to hand. It doesn't go back to the land. And, um, yeah. My Mycoron stole the land. <laughs> because when Mycoron takes any damage, it puts a copy of itself. Spike shield can work. Anything that reflects... As long as my Koran takes a little bit of damage, it works. So, another thing you can use is um, Storm Armor. Not Storm Shield, which neutralizes, but Storm Armor. This card right here, my Koran would excel at. I think my Koran can use armor, right? Yes, my Koran can use armor and tools. So, using something like that would help you out tremendously. Yeah, my Koran you won't have for a little while. Um, let me look at my information. I have all of the blocks that the cards are in. That's actually how Cul-de-Sap Central got the uh, card block information. I actually made it for them. Are you Sleeping God? My Koran is from the last block. Uh, my Koran is actually from the Sleeping Gods block, which, if I'm not mistaken, is Quest 5, Chapter 8. So, it really doesn't surprise me that you don't have it, because it literally is the one of the last blocks you can unlock. Um... That's also another last one, that's, um... I think it's actually the same set. Uh... If you're playing... Let's look at the books, or the, the blocks, I'll show you. Artifacts. So, you start off with Economy. When you defeat, um, Chapter 3, Mission 1, you unlock a standard pack. Literally, the best way to ink not only make your books better with stronger cards, but also make it easier for you to farm, you buy nothing but standard packs. You do not buy economy. As you see on the screen on the right, it says cheap packs with only five normal cards. Never buy them. Buy standard packs. Standard packs, you get six normal rarity, you get three strange, and one rare. And you literally farm for standard until you have a working uh, Kelpie and Old Willow book. No, don't buy economy. Buy, um, buy standard. The reason for it is standard, at that point in time, unlocks all the blocks. And what that means is economy only has starter block. That's all you're going to get is literally the starter block from economy. And there's two other blocks once you unlock standard. Think. Or is it just one? Let me look real quick. No, when when you unlock standard, you unlock the drifter block, and you unlock in darkness block. You have to get an elemental card from the parts pack. Um, they will look like uh. It will look like this, and this is like Mark of Fire, which will turn into a fire element. That will turn into water, earth, air, 
Um. Then you have the three different parts packs. But no, back to your question, Bacon. Um, economy only has the starter block, and that's the first card block. Yeah, the, the card packs, you actually have better RNG, because you have to understand that when you play a map in the previous Coldacept games, that map determines what cards you'll get. Like, if you were playing Coldacept Saga, if you wanted the best chance of getting fire cards, you have to play on a fire-based map. If you wanted better water cards, you have to play on a water-based map. And in this case, yeah, you can buy uh, fire element packs, you can buy water element packs, you can also buy standard packs. Standard packs, like I said, have three blocks. They are known as Drifter, they're known as uh, Starter, Drifter, and In Darkness. Those are the first three card packs. Um, once you have a working Old Willow or Kelpie book, you can then totally disregard Standard. Because once you have a book that's taken care of AI, no problem, then you wait until Chapter 4, Quest 8. Once you beat that, you get Rich Pack. Rich Pack at that time will have Starter, In Darkness, and uh, Drifter, as well as City of Salvation. Rich Packs contain every single block pack that's unlocked at that point in time. City of Salvation has everything except for Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods has everything except for City of Salvation. And Rich Pack contains them all once you unlock them. Um, let me show Kelpie. Uh, I don't have it in the book, but I can show the card. Um, Old Willow is actually kind of exactly like Kelpie. Kelpie is a water-based creature, and it needs one water territory to play. And when Kelpie is on a water land, it's matching land. Kelpie stops everybody else on the field when they land on it. Oh, I, I already finished the Mycoran book guide. I'm basically wrapping it up for now. But no, uh, Kelpie stops everybody who lands on it that's not the owner of Kelpie, who does not own that copy. Now, Kelpie's pretty weak, with 30 HP. Um, you're gonna need cards like Fat Body to increase its HP plus 20. It, 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 here's the thing, right? If you want to gain your total magic and slow down your opponent, you don't actually have to have them attack it. You can put peace on it. You can make it so the opponent can't invade. The toll fee will be zero, but you still own the total magic from that land in play, and it does stop them. Um, there's, there's, those are the two ways you can play Kelpie and Old Willow books. Old Willow, um, needs two fire territories, but you get 10 HP more. He's not that bad, to be honest. Like, I love Old Willow. Here's a little trick. Why some people think like, oh, I can just buy, you know, the fire and earth pack. Because you can get fire and earth, and you can get water and air. Water and air and fire and earth only contain three neutral and two strange. Kelpie is a strange. Meaning, if you were to use the water and air pack, you can get Kelpies from there. I actually already did. 
uh, if you go to my videos, you will see um, my really rough, basically just to get you through Quest 4 Chapter 8 Old Willow Kelpie book. <laughs> yep. It's really rough. It's it's weak. It's literally just to get rid of, just get through the, the first part to let you unlock rich packs. It's pretty basic. But no, yeah, just don't buy economy. Just buy standard packs. Uh, let's let's buy a pack. I don't care. I mean, how much could I buy anyway? I have a, a hundred and four thousand GP. Let's buy a pack. So nothing's gonna be new for me. Okay, but you know this this could be your odds. Like you could get gelatinous wall. In my opinion, the best wall. If your opponent can't destroy it, it is the best wall. Whatever damage you take. If your creature survives, you gain five times that in magic. Most of the time, the AI will deal about 50 damage. If they deal 50 damage, you're gaining 250 magic. 50 times 5. It's an amazing, an amazing uh, wall. Form portal, you can teleport to the nearest gate. Okay, these are, are some of the, the cards that you can get from standard packs. From, ri from rich packs, you can expect to see cards like... Uh, now this is totally, everything's unlocked. Oh look, my Koran. That's, that's kind of funny. Creeping, oh by the way, likes the bacon. If you connect every day at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, well, if you connect every day, you get a free online card if you go to the online section. Uh, it resets at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time every day. It's either a free card or it's a f or it's free GP. I don't know what today's reward is, but you can look. You can get stuff like Creeping Coin, which is great in my opinion for. Uh, stalling and getting magic. You can expect to see stuff like Life Force, uh, which... Okay, because this thing contains every block. That's why you see Creeping Coin. Creeping Coin is from uh, the Drifter pack, I believe. Right, I, I need to sell these cards. <laughs> you can also sell cards, by the way. If you have more than five, I can do... Reselect, it added 23 cards. Because all 23 of these are cards that I have more than 4 of, and then you can sell them. So if you if you have more than 4, or if they are cards that you don't care about, you can sell them. Alright, good night, Bacon. I'll be ending this, this stream too. <laughs> Oh wait, wait, no, 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 no. Sell. Yes, sell. Uh, so again, that's my Koran. If it takes any damage, you put a copy into play. Pretty, pretty decent book to be honest, even for it being not really, in my opinion, that, that good. I mean, I would like to see some storm armors in here. You know, have both tools and shields. Because if something like that was Kaiser Penguin was in play. If the person with Kaiser Penguin attacked me, I was screwed. Because Kaiser Penguin destroys tools. Which is what Angry Mask is, which is what Petrify Stone is, which is what uh, Wonder Charm is. But then stuff like Spike Shield, uh, Storm Armor. Scale armor, plate armor, or plate mail, sorry. Uh, anything that shields, like, it could not destroy that. Can it? Let me look. Um, I don't think so. I think Kaiser Penguin is just... 
No, it just destroys tool, scroll, or supporting creature. So it can't destroy weapons and it can't destroy armor. So stuff like storm armor is unaffected and uh, scale armor and plate mail and chain mail. So you have to you have to weigh the pros and the cons. Like angel cape, plus a really great card in my opinion. Um, if you're going against books or if you're going against AI that you know that they have um, destroy item and steal effects, those are null and void. Um, you know, you have chain mail, you have diamond armor, plus 60 HP. You have, actually, this is really great armor. Yes? And, well, yes and no. You do have to worry about gremlins. Um, but by the way, this is a great armor. Gelatinous armor. If I'm not mistaken, you can actually stack jelly. You can put gelatinous armor on gelatinous wall, and both abilities will trigger. If I'm not mistaken, you actually get. Uh, I think you get double boost. I'm not 100% certain. Because they are two distinct um, battle end abilities that trigger at different times. So, in theory, you should. Yeah, double the jello. In theory, you should be able to give gelatinous wall, gelatinous armor, and then get double the rewards. So, remember how I said if somebody did 50 damage to you, you get 250 magic? Well, if this does work the way I think it does, you'd gain 500 magic off 50 damage. But yes, you do have to worry about stuff like, uh, like Gremlin. Destroy, destroy his opponent's item. That is true. Um, if a creature or an item states like it can't be destroyed, now you're looking good. I mean, now, now you're looking really good. Um, Gremlin can be nasty. The only real way to protect yourself from Gremlin is to buff up your creature with, uh, like, fat body or vitality. But otherwise, I mean, Gremlin can be a really nasty thorn in one's booty. Yeah, that's my Koran version 1. Uh, I don't know what book we're going to be looking at next. Um, and that's going to be Friday? Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to be looking at a new book on Friday. I don't know what book it is. Um... Saturday, we're probably going to be looking at, again, another new book. We're, we're basically going to be looking at new books every day I stream, which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. There might be some non cold stuff Evolved streams, but I, if there are, I don't know when that's going to be. Like, I, I don't have a, have a need to stream anything else right now. Uh, odds are I probably will. Um, I, like I said, I, I do have... How many do I have total? I don't know the exact total. Let me look right now. Because this all, like I said, this all came from that Book 2 PNG website. There are 752 books. And if all goes according to plan, I will be doing all 752 books. Now, there might be some changes, like, technically, uh, the second book in this list. 
I won't be doing. There's one of them that I'm not doing, and the reason why I'm not doing it is I technically already did a version. Um, there's... The first Revolt guidebook that I did was... Subjects... Kelpie GP Farming book. One of the books... One of the first books, actually, that... I have, out of the 752, was a Kelpie GP farming book. Well, I'm not going to show off both. The first one I showed off was the better one. I, I would not show off the other one. It's, in my opinion, it's not that good. So, with that, this is going to be the end of the stream. If anybody wants a book guide, a book, a book guide, a book guide scene, they can send me a uh, text list, or they can just literally just write up everything and send it to me via Discord. Does not matter what you want. It could be either a book you've used before, the book you're using now, or a book you want to see how it might be worked. Like if you don't know how it might run, send me the book. And as long as like the next, like right now, I don't know what I'm doing for the next book guide. If somebody were to send me a book right now, that would probably be the next book guide. So yeah, anybody can send me any book via Discord. I will convert it into a PNG format. Uh, the person who made the book will get full credit for making the book. And uh, I'll show it up on stream. But yeah, just want to say... Uh, Kent and Likes the Bacon, thank you very much for hanging out. I'm gonna be back on Friday around the same time, between eight, starting at eight to eight twenty uh, Central Standard Time. Again, going to be doing book guides. Probably most of this uh, this entire stream is gonna basically be like Revolt. Oh, and in case people are wondering, why? Have I been doing these? I've been doing the book guides for one reason. Nobody really teaches people how to play Cold Decept. Not just how certain books work, certain cards work, but in general, nobody really teaches. If you look everywhere, it's... Here's, you know, the story guide going from the first mission to the last mission. And that's all you see. You don't see anything else. Nothing else is ever really explained. Not to the degree that I want to have done. The real reason is because I wanted to know how to play a Powder Eater book. There was text guides, but there was no video showing it. There was no video showing how uh, a Powder Eater book works. There have been videos showing, on the PS2 version, there, there's a video on YouTube showing Powder Eater on every territory. They never showed you how. They never showed you um, how do you power up Powder Eater, how do you move them around, how do you copy them, what are the do's and don'ts. And that really kind of annoyed me because there's so much talent in the Cold Step community that I was surprised that everything was spent more on text and less on actually showing people how it's done. Because you can be as descriptive as you want to be in text. Nothing can portray exactly how something works as a video and speaking because there's sometimes where when you're writing something down it's easier to speak it than it is to write it. it it's easier to portray what you want to say as you're speaking than it is as writing that is in a nutshell why I started creating these book guides 
Nobody else was really showing people how to play the game. Nobody was showing people how certain books work, how certain combos work. And as, as long as I can, I'm going to be doing these book guides. So we're probably going to be going through all 750-something books on top of whatever else people give me. But again, until uh, Friday, I hope you all have a great time. And thank, again, thanks for stopping by. And I will see you all next time. On behalf of my Koran, goodbye.